Hey, what's up guys? This is Joshua Sohn. I wanted to go over how to get your track prepped and ready for recording purposes um, through one DAW to the other. Now, what I mean by that is most recording studios still use Pro Tools, and that's been the industry standard for many, many years. Uh, I don't see it changing for now. Um, so, the thing about being a composer most composers don't use Pro Tools as their main uh, tool, uh, so to speak. So a lot of composers from Hollywood will use Cubase, for instance. Um, Digital Performer uh, is really popular, and there's also Logic. The, the concept is um, we like using one program, and the engineers like to use Pro Tools. And so it, it can get a little bit tricky sometimes when you're trying to translate your session onto the Pro Tools session. The trick with this is you want to be able to have the click track um, intact so that um, there's nothing uh, offsetting the session from each other. Another thing is it's great for bar referencing or measure referencing so maybe you have your sheet music all printed up and um, while you're in the control room you can click on uh, or do the talk back, talk to the orchestra, say, all right, measure 65, let's uh, change this part. And so if you guys can have um, the same measure numbers, that's also a plus. Okay, so where do you begin? Uh, well, the, the main um, workaround to this is to actually export this as a MIDI file. So what you would do is you go to export MIDI file. This is in Cubase, but in any of your DAWs, it would be the same function. And I would just call it tempo track um, pretty ones, which is the name of the film. All right. And then here um, they give you some other options. Keep in mind, this is not to uh, translate the MIDI file itself or with the da data. Um, because we're not going to actually do a mock-up. We're, we're, all we need is uh, get the data for the tempo track and maybe time signatures and other things too. So um, I think we can leave that as is. We'll press OK. I have also Pro Tools ready and loaded here. So what I'll do now is um, show you what the engineer would do. And if you guys can do this and you have a, um, a way to buy Pro Tools, then I highly recommend doing this yourself because then uh, that's less time for the engineer to do this and in the end you might actually save money in the long run. Okay, so going back to uh, the idea is we're going to find the tempo track here. There's my tempo track. All right, which is a MIDI file. Now, um, what just happened, as you'll see, is uh, in Pro Tools, there's the tempo tracks on the very top. It's in uh, green here. And then also has a time signature line. So that's giving me all of the information. And as you'll see, right here, that changes up. And um, that's changing accordingly. Also has my MIDI files. Now the MIDI files, again, are not necessary. So I'm going to delete those. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind, I realize that Pro Tools always starts with one. Um, you can actually offset the, uh, the the bars in Pro Tools just like in Cubase or in, in other DAWs. But uh, my point is, make sure that your DAW is lining up with the same number, and that's good for the bar referencing. So. You know, if, if you're in the studio and you're actually having uh, sheet music in front of you, uh, it's actually nice to have this match. So right now it, it, it starts with one. Have that match with your DAW's uh, uh, start of the bar too. And Cubase, by default, it starts with zero. And so in Cubase, you can actually fudge that and offset it so that the first bar starts with one so that it matches with Pro Tools or vice versa. Pro Tools can do the same thing, you can offset that too. So just make sure they match. That way it's, it's a little easier. It's one less thing to think about when you're um, in the re recording studio. That's it guys, so I hope that helps with your tech questions regarding recording and uh, 
uh, translating your session into Pro Tools. It's a simple job. Um, it, it's not as hard as most people would think. But um, I hope this gives some insight and you guys can use this as a feature reference for um, the, the time you'll actually need to use it. All right. If you like my videos, please subscribe and I will talk to you later.